Love is war made me cry. And there's nothing wrong with it. At least that's what my therapist says. We can all agree that Love is war is a modern classic and one of the most unique anime that we ever had. But why? Well, there is the obvious answer that it does everything right that it needs to. It's a comedy anime that exaggerates every single scene with its over-the-top animation, voice acting and audio with characters that fits their roles perfectly. That's the obvious answer. And yes, yeah, scenes like this what made me love the show too. But at the same time a scene like this, or this, had just as much of an impact. It made me cry. A comedy anime made me cry. But these scenes are what made this anime for me from a great comedy to a great anime. You know, there are two types of cry bank. <laughs> I mean, two types of animes that can make you cry. The first is these animes that are solely focused on to make you cry from the first minute. That the whole premise of the show is something tragic, like how when I want to eat your pancreas, Sakura suffered from a fatal pancreatic illness, or how in Anohana, Menma was a dead person whose last wish was for all his friends to be together. Despite the fact that they are made to make you cry, they are still enjoyable and tell you a great story. And the second type are animes that set these scenes up throughout multiple episodes or even seasons. Animes where the focus isn't necessarily on to make you cry, but the fact that how much you can relate to these characters is what made you cry. And that's satisfying. The best example would be Clanad, which just made me cry throughout like 10 episodes. Even if the set part was like half a season ago, I just couldn't stop. Yeah, there is maybe something wrong with me. It is the same category that Love is War fits into, obviously not at the same level as Clannet, but how? How does a comedy anime have this much of a psychological impact on us? Maybe we are just idiots that are way too attached to characters that doesn't even exist? But who cares? I like it, you like it, we all like it. For us to understand the impact of these scenes, we first have to understand the characters. Okay, maybe this is just an excuse for me to talk about stuff I like. In Love is War, every single character represents a typical trope that we experienced over and over and over in every single anime. We have the Tsundere rich girl, or the airhead that acts before she thinks, the shutting geek that avoids any sort of interaction at all cost, the kid that is smarter than everyone else, but that's just how we got introduced to them. One thing Love is War does the best is that there is constant character improvement. Constant explanation of why certain characters act the way they are. Yes, Kaguya three seasons later is still just as much of a tsunder as in the first episode, but the story takes its time to explain why. And it makes us relate to these characters. I personally didn't like Kaguya at all. The way she acted, the way her character was written, is not a trope that I would enjoy. Yet she was my favorite character at the end of season 1, because of how much detail they went into her character. The president, or Miyuki, is the only character that doesn't represent his original trope anymore. He was introduced as the student council president, the smartest person in his school, someone that is placing among the top 10 in the nation mock exams. A true hard worker. No, it's not that they made him dumber or something like that, but the writers simply just didn't want to add anything more to his trope, because everything was explained from the start. Rather than, he focused on explaining everything else about him, even the smallest things, like that he can't sing. But he got help from Fujiwara and his voice improved. And it's not even something that they just did for one episode and done. In a much recent episode, we had a scene where his singing voice got much better. These small details are what make these characters so special. Fujiwara is the airhead of the show, the character that's supposed to be much dumber than anyone else, considering that he's in the same student council as the top two students. But rather than giving her this oh I'm dumb, oh I don't understand anything type of act, they slowly show us that she is very clever. Not a genius, not a hard worker, but clever. That everything she does has a reason behind it. She doesn't just want to play a game to have fun, she wants to win. She purposely sets up scenarios to achieve what she wants. Obviously, that doesn't mean she's good at it, cause she cheats just as easily as she breathes. The main point is that she's just as smart as her other characters, but lazy. We have a ton of scenes that shows that if she works hard, she can achieve a lot, but she'd rather just take the easy route. We even have side characters like Hayasaka, who plays an important role and isn't just written as a one-sided character without a real personality. She's a valet of the Shinomiya family who helps Kaguya for more than 10 years. She's shown as a much more mature character than any of the other characters, but those small moments where she breaks her character are what makes her so great. She's the favorite character of so many people for a reason. I especially enjoyed how her character was written in the last episode and it makes her a much more understandable character. In the episode, the president gets invited into a party and since he always declines, he feels bad about it and accepts it. Kaguya doesn't have any problem with that. Well, at least until Hayasaka explained that it might be a group date. 
the there can be other girls, which also dug her own grave as now she has to go herself. As Miyuki already known her as the girl she quote unquote dumped, it was easy for Hayasaka to convince him to stay there. She easily finished her mission and could have gone home at that point. But I just love how the fact of Kagoya enjoying herself so much broke her character completely. That she wanted to show that she can seduce Miyuki this time. Something that is completely irrelevant at this point, but she knows that it can get a reaction out of Kaguya. The seducing obviously didn't went well, but I love that later on she was honest with Kaguya. That she was jealous. I love that we just got this much detail even into a side character. You know, Ishigami is one of those type of characters that animes usually go the least into the details with. Yet this anime did the exact opposite in season 2 episode 11, which is by the way the highest rated episode of Love is War. But it's not just this one episode. It started way back in season 1 titled You Ishigami Closes His Eyes. Where throughout three parts, it goes more in depth into his character with the exact same premise every single time. That he's not alone. It first started about a more simple thing his grades, that he has to pass it or he will be held back. Kaguya overheard it and despite the fact that they aren't close to each other, she wanted to help him. Ok, maybe it looked a bit more like torture at the start. First, Ishigami didn't understood her intentions at all, since no one ever cared about him, no one ever tried. Ishigami hears this girl's bad mouthing him, but he doesn't even try to say anything against it. He lost hope about other people trusting him, and this is the first time when Ishigami mentions his incident and that they shouldn't be seen together. Instead of Kaguya carrying out what others say, she stands up for him and she says that she trusts him no matter what others say. In the second part, Ishigami goes against his own will and joins the cheerleading squad. Something that he always hated, but he wants to be normal. He wants others to see him, he wants others to care about him. They are the polar opposite of him. He doesn't want to be there, yet he stays there. Which might not be the best idea after all. I mean, they came up with the idea of wearing the opposite gender's uniform. Ishigami not knowing what to borrow a uniform from, he decides to quit. But just before that, Kaguya lets him borrow it without a problem. Once again showing that he's not alone. That people care about him and he decides to give the chilling squad a shot. The third and last part goes the most into his life, about what exactly happened with him and it lets him deal with that emotion, it lets him get past it. The whole episode is dedicated to just this one part, starting with the performance of the cheerleading squad. Despite the fact of him not wanting to join it, he realizes that he enjoys it, that he is having fun, he feels like that it's time for him to look forward, he just wants to enjoy life again. Well at least until this beach ruins the moment and makes Ishigami regret everything that he done keeping him in the loop of depression. He gets asked to run the anchor leg in the relay race and hears the words I heard about you in junior high school, which well let's just say frighten him. When he gets into his position, he can see from his perspective that everyone's eyes disappeared. He feels like everyone is against him and the only thing that he hears is negativity. Even if it isn't, his mind just makes it up like they are mocking him. And this is now the part where we actually see what happened with him, why everyone hates him. This girl was really welcoming towards him, she was friendly, she would talk to him. He didn't like her, but he felt like she saved him. She got a boyfriend and usually for Ishigami, he wished them happiness. At least until he realized that this guy is a two-time back-to-back champion. I'm the two-time! He didn't want the girl to get hurt and tried to talk with the guy to stop, but he just doubled down and even tried to set Ishigami up with her. Now we have no idea what he said, but it's fairly obvious what he tried to set up. Out of anger, Ishigami beat him up in front of everyone, yet he still threatened him that if he continues, he will take it out on the girl. But I just cannot explain how much I hate this guy. I wish it would just be a completely made up character, but there are actually so many people like this in real life. Using out this moment, he plays it like Ishigami loves this girl and that's why he beat him. Ishigami thought no one would believe this, yet it was the exact opposite. No one believed Ishigami, even if he was right. It got to a point where it's not just that they didn't believe him, he didn't believe in himself. He fully accepted the fact that he was wrong. They demanded an apology letter from him to let him back into the school, but he just never wrote it. Once later, once again they tried to guilt trip him by saying that this other guy would forgive him. Out of anger, he tried his hardest to write it, but he never did. He just never could. In the moment, Ishigami is just completely blocked. He doesn't even know where he is. The only thing that breaks the silence is Miyuki's words. In the moment of desperation, once again showing that he is not alone. Ishigami suddenly remembered what took him out of depression. It was Miyuki and the rest of the student council. The only people that trusted him, despite the fact that they didn't even know him. 
Miyuki acknowledged the fact that he could have been smarter about it, but at the end, Ishigami achieved his goal. This guy being too paranoid about Ishigami refusing to write the apology, he never did anything to the girl. At the end, Miyuki showed Ishigami what the letter should be, the iconic line, Go to hell, dumbass. Later on, Ishigami using those exact same words against the girl. He felt a need to win the race, he felt like he has to win to prove everyone wrong, but he failed. He thought that once again everyone is going to hate him, but it was the exact opposite. People were proud of him, and at that moment for the first time, he finally seen their eyes. My eyes are literally teared up while writing this. Later on, they win the sports festival and that's how the episode ends. Truly one of the best anime episodes and just one of the best stories ever. It's just beautiful in a way that words can't even explain it. This episode is what truly made me appreciate Love is War. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you will have a great day. Good night.